66 phallic symbols hidden in plain sight. Broomsticks, the staple of the house mom. Maybe you never noticed this because your wife does all the cleaning, as she should be, but when her man is at work as he should be, what's in her hands all day? Yeah. You definitely didn't think about that when you did chores as a kid, did you? Too obvious? Seems like a stretch? Absolutely not. Why do you think witches ride broomsticks? Bear with me, because this one is important. Try a Google search, sitting on handrail. You won't find one picture of a person sitting on a handrail with one leg on either side. You'll find a few fail videos though. That's because this position is impractical. It's impossible. It's an inherently divergent system. Yet witches straddle their rod all the time without falling off. Magic? You betcha. And when you think witch, you never really see a male witch now do you. That's because these bitches, I mean witches, don't need men. They have their male phallus in hand at all times, with the long shaft and hairy bush. And why do you think they're always shown against a full moon? Because the male phallic symbol is not complete without the female circle symbol to penetrate. Plus, the moon represents the mother goddess, part of the unholy trinity in the occult. Think about that next Halloween, when little Jessica comes knocking on your door. And think about the hat she's wearing. A circle with a cone on it. <sighs> Again with the circle on the rod. If there's anything that epitomizes the occult, it's a witch. It's no wonder why they were burned at the stake. Don't even get me started on sexy Halloween costumes. <sighs> Purves. The chef's hat. Funny looking thing on top of their head, isn't it? Maybe they're trying to emulate the Pope. Did you know that the hats he wears are occult symbols predating Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior? You should really check out the Know Your Enemy series by Mark Fairley. It's brilliant. Long story short, after God destroyed all of mankind with a flood because he saw that man was bad, he repopulated with Noah and his offspring. Three generations from Noah, Nimrod was born. Nimrod was the first mighty hunter, established the first great kingdom on earth, ruling over Babylon, builder of the Tower of Babel. He married Semiramis for a wife, and together they established a religion revolving around him as Marduk, the sun god, bearer of fire, and her as Astarte, the moon goddess. Later on, when Semirami had a child out of wedlock, legend says that Nimrod threatened to dethrone her, so she had Nimrod killed and claimed her son as immaculately conceived. Her son was Tamutz and claiming he was of godly origin, she became Mother of God, making Tamut the first Antichrist and Semirami the first Mother of God. Together they peddled their religion, known by Christians as the Mystery Religion, which morphed over time but revolved around the sun, moon, and immaculate offspring. Marduk became multiple gods, with the primary god known as Nibu, Bel, or eventually Baal, meaning Lord. Jehovah also means Lord, however Jehovah is the true Lord, the God of Abraham whose seed would eventually give rise to Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. So this mystery religion has persisted from the time of Nimrod until now in various forms, finding its way into pagan religions and eventually co-opted by the Catholic Church, more recently making a resurgence in the Illuminati, Freemasonry, and modern Satanism. Therefore, everything is potentially of this false religion, which is clearly inspired by Satan. Therefore, anything resembling snakes, Satan, sun gods, moon gods, Zoroastrian astrology, Nimrod, Samirami, Marduk, Astarte, Tamuts, Babylon, Ziggurats, Nebu, Bel, Baal, or anything sexual is evil and against God's will, simply put. Now seeing as the Pope's hat is a mitre hat connected to Dagon, which is pagan, Babylonian, and satanic, it's clear that the chef's hat is also satanic. So it might be that the chef's hat has an origin in pagan theology. Or maybe they just want to have fun with logos. Why do you think they're so obsessed with measurements? After all, these people love putting things in their mouths. 
And while we're on the topic of putting things in your mouth, let's talk about beer. Nice long neck, pop off the top, put some lips on that thing and oh yeah. You think I'm kidding. Just watch any Super Bowl commercial. They've got women practically on their knees over these things. You think it stops there? How about root beer for teens? Or water bottles? And sports drinks? I mean, they've even got kids drinking from these things. It's sick. They don't know what they're doing. They just don't know. The barber pole. This symbol has a long, weird history, but is clearly phallic in every modern form. The Daily Omnivore has a great article on it. During medieval times, barbers performed surgery on customers, as well as tooth extractions. The origin of the red and white barber pole is associated with the service of bloodletting and was historically a representation of bloody bandages wrapped around a pole. The original pole had a brass wash basin on top, representing the vessel in which leeches were kept, and on the bottom, representing the basin that received the blood. The pole itself represents the staff that the patient gripped during the procedure to encourage blood flow. Yuck! Today, it doesn't represent any of that, but it's still widely used. Why? Because what barber doesn't want a girthy shaft with ribbing, a round base, and a round head? Think about that the next time you're getting your hair cut. Nuts and bolts. There's nothing more obvious than this one, people. The male shaft enters the female hole, and the union of the two creates an inseparable force greater than the sum of the parts. There's no pretenses about it either. If you read an engineering book, they're always labeled exactly that way. Male thread and female thread. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, because engineers are perverts. Before we delve further into phallic engineering, I just want to say that I'm going to do a whole video on this topic. Engineers are perverts, and they're involved in the occult. After all, most engineers are members of professional societies, fraternities, and brotherhoods. They have codes and codices, trade secrets, and their own form of law. They plan and build our cities, and if they want, they can take our land through eminent domain. You know, for the greater good. And don't be surprised to see Freemasons in the upper echelons of these, quote, professional societies. After all, knowledge is power to these people. How else do you think they get to stamp their symbol in plain sight, on all sorts of government buildings, and on the welcome signs of so many cities and towns? Without belaboring this point too long, I'm not saying that every engineer is a Freemason or a devil worshiper. In fact, most devil worshippers don't even know they're worshipping the devil at all. What I'm saying is just that they may not know what they're involved in. After all, most engineers are merely worker bees for the powers that be. So much of what follows may seem like mundane engineering happenstance, but make no mistake about it, they are occult symbols. Phallic symbols in plain sight. 26. The Church Steeple just as the pagans erected obelisks in high places, the church erects steeples, ostensibly to symbolize that God is most high. However, we all know it's actually an occult symbol exalting man above God, particularly the priest in charge of the chapel or the pope in charge of the church. After all, the very shape of a classic church and steeple is a long vertical shaft and a bulbous base at the bottom. This one even has a bush. The clock tower. Extending the tradition of the steeple, the clock tower stands tall above everyone and everything else. Oftentimes it has four sides and a pyramidal top, again like the Egyptian obelisk. Sometimes they stand alone, making it obvious, again, that this is a male phallus. Why do you think they call it the Big Ben? I guess if they called it their Little Johnson, it would have been a little too obvious. Thanks for listening. God bless America. We're all living under that bridge, guys. The end is near.